folks out there, Facebook friends, people of Black Junction TV. My name is Ottomir, and this is the Hard Black Truth. And um, you know what? I got a quick message for you, and then I'm going to rant for a little bit. Uh, but to those of you who saw the uh, Tyson versus Jones fight, you know I got a little something, something to say about that. But uh, right quick. He is not some black leader. He isn't chasing fame. He doesn't crave white acceptance nor smile pleasantly for his enemies. Instead, he silently watches them. He is faceless. He is everywhere. He is black first. His name is Occam Jeffers, a ruthless counter-racist hitman. Occam Jeffers has been assigned a mission to eliminate murderous cops. Will he obtain justice for the subjugated black citizens of New Orleans? Or will white violence once again reign supreme? Find out in the upcoming novel, War of the Heart. Available everywhere books are sold on December 1st. Visit spiritof1811publishing.com. Our story, our family. Shout out to B1 brother Josiah Starr on his novel, War of the Heart. While you guys are out there looking for entertainment, it's also good to use your eyes to, to read. You know, reading is fundamental. And even if it be a work of fiction, we are out here entertaining ourselves with everything else. Why not pick up a black person's novel that, that, that's giving you a, a good black first story and read it? All right. Check it out for yourselves. Link in the description. But I had to speak on this because here you have two black men well outside of their prime who still managed to get into the ring for eight rounds, albeit these were two minute rounds. And um, there was a lot of hugging and holding on, but they managed to do it, right? They managed to, to make it and go to distance. And, you know, everybody wins. They called it a draw when, you know, everyone to include Roy Jones. Well, I would say not everyone because Mike Tyson, can I just say this about Mike? Say what you want about the brother. We pick at him. Uh, you know, he's a convicted felon. He has a rap sheet, all this negative stuff that he's had to deal with and go through in his life. But you know what? He showed excellent character last night. I will give him that. And I'm not saying that he hasn't done so in the past, but the way he carried himself, I, I, I won't say I was surprised, but I was like, yo, this, this, this is a class act. This is a stand up guy. And, you know, when they called it a draw, you know, Mike wasn't, I mean, this, this was Chris, he, he, he wasn't doing none of that. He said, oh, that, that's fine. It's fine with me. He, it was fine with him. He was just happy to be there in his element, right? And he wanted to be able to do it again. Roy Jones, on the other hand, was like, hey, uh, we going to go back to the table. We going to discuss some things because I'm going to have to go to the doctor uh, I'm going to have to give this urine sample, make sure I ain't got no internal bleedings or anything like that. Um, Roy Jones didn't want any part of it seemingly leading up to this fight. Uh, when he was in the fight, it seemed as though after the third or fourth round, it became clear that this dude was in over his head. Now, granted, Mike Tyson didn't really do too much. Okay, there were a lot of shots missed on both ends, right? But it was clear that Jones was merely trying to survive, okay? But he survived. They were able to shake hands. I was wondering why he wouldn't take off his gloves after the fight. Uh, he, he, he said that he was doing it for Kobe. You got to give respect to that, man. Got to give respect to that. Um, it would be interesting to see Jones come back again, maybe fighting someone who maybe isn't as uh aggressive uh, i don't know but uh for tyson i'm sure he would love to be able to do that again win lose or draw um the man showed to, showed himself to be in excellent shape it was funny because when this first uh was announced it my my, my initial thoughts especially watching tyson train because you didn't ever see videos of jones training at least i didn't see any uh when you would watch tyson train you know, but when he would train, uh, he, he looked to be in shape, right? Uh, and everyone was thinking, like, what the hell did Jones get himself into? But 
at the fight night when he was talking and everything, I'm like, he, he gave that appearance of, to me, of Danny Glover, of, you know, as they continued to keep him in those Lethal Weapon movies, and it was clear that uh, his age was was really catching up with him, and, and he had like kind of like a stiff walk, and I was like, you know, I don't know too much about this. Maybe maybe Tyson takes one to the face and, you know, won't be able to handle it too well. But when he was in the ring, uh, all of that stiffness or whatever, that, that kind of just went out the window. Uh, Jones, on the other hand, my man was gasping for air. And it was like, I, I think at one point they were even discussing uh, possibly stopping the fight. And I guess what they came to a consensus on was like, hey, look, my dude, you just got to survive. Throw your little pop shots, you know, try to get, try to get that pop shot done for the camera and then just hold them. You see what I'm saying? So that's what he did. There were flurries of punches thrown on both ends. Not a lot of those punches landing. Uh, but to see these two warriors still being warriors, that was, that was great. And you know what? I will say this much. The average human being on this planet cannot see Mike Tyson and they would probably have a hard time trying to mess with Jones as well so uh, those are my thoughts but I know you guys wanted to hear a little bit more because my man Nate Robinson got yamchered <laughs> what, 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 what was this dude think first of all how do you go from NBA this is this is Someone who, unlike Jones and Tyson, he's still in his youth, right? He's still somewhat in his prime. Uh, he was a former NBA player. Uh, I know he did his thing, and he decided to go over to boxing. But my whole deal is, my dude, if you're going to go to boxing, do it seriously. It makes no sense that you would have uh, NBA money. I'm not trying to count his pockets, but... Clearly, you didn't have the right people in your corner. I mean, it was it was from the start. It was evident that you was just he, Nate Robinson was completely unprepared for that ring. And the sad part is you fought another person who was seemingly unprepared. That dude that he fought that YouTube star or whatever. He, he didn't fight with any real precision. There wasn't anything you know, precise about his punches. My man threw haymakers and Robinson got caught with the haymakers. And okay, you got caught with the haymaker, but, but my dog, did you have to fall like Apollo Creed? Did you really have to give us this? Like that is crazy. And he had, he had, <laughs> he had a Mexican uh, uh, corner for his team. Like, Yo, they should all be fired. You just, just give it up. Go, go sell cars somewhere, man. That you, you, you can do that. Um, people will come to you for your star power, and, and you can live a good life doing something like that at your own leisure, rather than trying to get into the ring and making a complete ass of yourself. Seriously. This makes no sense. I, I I think he was able to get up, so I, I think he'll be okay. I think a lot of this was acting and posing, and some of it just to me seemed as though he was doing it on purpose, like like falling out the way he did. Just seemed a little too incredible to be true, uh, for you to just fall in in that manner, to be sprawled out on the canvas in that manner. I just. You know, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, um, much less the lack, the complete lack of boxing skill. There was no technique with what he was doing. It's as though he just went into the ring and started bum rushing the dude. Like that that's not boxing at all whatsoever. You gonna get knocked out. If you're gonna get knocked out, at least get knocked out trying to Work on your technique. He had no technique. I, again, I have to wonder who the hell did did he have around him? He probably surrounded himself with a bunch of yes men, and this was the result. But you know what? I said my piece. <laughs> I appreciate you guys listening. <laughs>
<laughs> My man got yumchered. He got yumchered. Oh god. All right, all right. Um, y'all holler at me. My name is Zada Man. Uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe. I, I need that. And, you know, if you guys really enjoy my works, you know, hit me up on my cash app. My name is Otterman. Holla at me. Peace. Mm -hmm.